Alright, hey guys, this is Tyrael and I'm here with Gian and we're bringing you an audio commentary. And today we're doing a clan war between Bad and Overdosed. And the players we're going to be seeing today are Fitch, spawning as the White Zerg at the 9 o'clock position. And we have Bad and Terry spawning at the 2 o'clock as the Orange Terran. And I'm, and this game's going to be played on Athena. Now, I'm here with Gian, so Gian, what would you do want to go on about this map or explain about it a little bit before I start this game? Uh, well, Athena is a three-player map, so uh, uh, definitely scouting is going to be important. Uh, when they scout is going to be important because then uh, there might be a, uh, some sort of block or, um, or depending on what they see when they scout. Um, they can also be scouting in the wrong position, so a lot of the beginning scouting may be due to, uh, to luck, and so we'll see what happens. And not to mention, Athena does have those two bridges where you could set up a very good pincer. There's actually three real entrances you have to use to defend your base. Yep, let's get started. Alright. So, uh, Antares is actually the leader of Bad, which uh, is Bad Boys. So this is the leader versus uh, one of the elite members of Overdose. And we see here both players are just getting their wor warming up, getting their fingers going, hoping that they're hoping for what's going to be working right. We see Fitch scouting to the south position, and he's obviously scouting in the wrong direction, as we can see. And speaking of warming up, um, actually a lot of players they just like to spam click and like uh, select things just to just to warm their fingers up. It's actually pretty interesting, but it seems to be effective. Yeah, it's exactly what all the professional players do. They have to have their hands warmed up so they can multitask. Like, look at Bisu or Red Nauta, for example. He, the, he has one of the highest APMs in all of StarCraft. And we see an FP VOD of him, it's just his fingers going completely crazy. And it looks like Antares is going to wall off his ramp. Going with a 10 supply, so he's looking more like this might he wants to go for a macro oriented build, try and build up a little bit before he goes out. And it is actually, it is actually a light depot, so the depot is coming much later than he should have had it. And here we see his racks coming up. He's got about 9 SEVs on that mineral line compared to Fitch who has probably 10 maybe 11 drones on his minerals but it looks like yeah Fitch is gonna probably yeah we see a 12 pool 12 hatch yeah 12 hatch sorry ladies and gentlemen my brain's not in fifth gear right now so it looks like uh, the Terran player is going for a, a bio build and not going for a fast expansion so we're going to see a lot of uh, strong amounts of early units, whereas Fitch is going to have a stronger economy. So we'll see how these two face off. Yeah, it looks like it's probably he's going to play probably just a standard SK Terran build where he pumps out. He's probably going to have maybe one, two factories going, one for tanks. He's going to pump out a couple of science vessels and use Irradiate, which, Gian, do you want to explain Irradiate to everyone? So for the listeners out there that don't know what it does, we can they can have a clear view? Well basically Irradiate is a, um, a very high-tech spell by the Science Vessel. What it basically does is uh, you cast it on one unit and it's basically a, a diseased unit that infects everyone around it and it does damage to, to everything it touches. So it's really good against um, forces of Zerglings and uh, a, lot, a lot of units because there's a lot of contact and basically a lot of damage going around. It's very good for of TVZ in case of say your Zerg opponent goes three hatch muta and they're just pumping mutalisks and they're all clustered up with for their micro you drop an irradiate in the middle you're gonna do some serious damage and here we see um, we see Antares uh, move out his marines he might be going to attack or, or give pressure to the the expo we'll see what happens Looks like he's trying for a million marine march, but it's rather late. That sunken is going to be out probably. Uh, looks like he's going to just try and run past the sunken now. No, nope, he 
going straight on for the attack, and here we see Fitz bringing their drones to defend. Well, he sends them back to the middle line. And there, the harass is pretty much defended. No, nope, there's reinforcements coming in. And Terry's does manage does does to take one drone, so he did do a little bit of damage and get away without um, any units lost. It's lost. And there, and Terry's loses his SCV scouting on the inside. Layer attack coming up for Fitch, so we're probably going to see a Spire and then followed by probably a Hydralis Den. He'll do a little mutal harass and then move straight into Lurker attack. Now Fitch here made a small little mistake. Uh, he's caught at 18 out of 18 supply, so he's stuck with uh, not being able to make units for a little bit until that Overlord just popped. Uh, so he has a lot of minerals in comparison to what he should have. And when you take a look here at and Harry's base, he's still just pumping from both barracks. Neither player's looking like they're really going to do anything at this moment, but we see a couple creep colonies coming up, so it looks like Fitch is going to try and defend this with a little more creep colony and try and save some money for those mutil mutilisks. So uh, Fitch just sent a, a scouting zergling over to uh, Terry's base and he saw a, a very large marines and medic army, so he's, he's putting down something he's getting ready for the attack. And here comes the large medic marine force here. Now if uh, Fitch holds here, I say that he has a huge advantage because he has the economic advantage. He, I mean, he has his expansion up, so uh, he's bound to have the advantage. And, uh, and then Ontario's would be left far behind in technology and in units. I know something's are just doing a number of those poor names. And that harass has just been completely denied. I mean, he lost probably four or five marines carelessly. And he's got two marines and a fire bat coming in for reinforcements, but that's just not going to be enough to break that. Whoa, five, five is what it's going to look like sunken colony one. So and Terry's being forced to retreat, and we see Fitch getting, has his spire up already, looks like he's pumping mutilists. So he's probably going to go in and try and harass a bit, just break up, kill a few of those SCVs at that mineral line. But we also see turrets going up, and turrets can be dangerous if there's a large cluster, but one or two turrets can be easily sniped by a group of, say, nine, ten mutilists. Yeah, all depending on the micro of the Zerg user, but uh, if there's only a turret here, a turret there, then uh, it could be pretty easily taken out, and then the mutilists could be free to harass all they want. I can't really tell, but the shadows underneath those mutilists are not very dark at this time, but looks like he's pumping a few, few more, and he, oh, Fitch was caught at full supply count for a moment, and here we see Antares is getting his expo up, and putting down another barracks inside, and here we see mutilists coming in, but does it look like he's going for the front door, he's probably going to try back door harass, but no, it looks like he's going to say like it looks like I was going to say it looks, looks like, like, it looks like uh, Fitch is just uh, scouting around looking to see where the units are if he, if uh, Antares is putting down any expansions or what. It looks like Fitch is just playing a standard two hash build. Well, he might he's probably going to be looking. Yeah, there goes a drone now. He's going looking to expand, and here we see the mute is coming in. Now they're going to be very effective against that five mer that five man marine force with one medic. That many mute can just snipe one marine, two at a time. That shadow is pretty thick underneath those mute GN. I think he's probably got about at least one control group. And we see more mute is morphing here now. And it looks like Antares is still just pumping out some marine medics. He hasn't tried to counter the tech at all. Uh, he's probably uh, he's probably uh, running for attack. Uh, you can see that he's uh, upgrading uh, the, his marine weapons from the engineering bay. So it's very possible he's waiting for that to upgrade and then move out and attack the um, the sunken colonies. <laughs> 